nose and traffic time is at least a week. And I'm stuck, and I look at the car in front of me. It's a pickup, kind of beat up. It's got a bunch of bumper stickers on it, so I got nothing else to do. I'm going to read the bumper stickers. And I look, and there's the first one, prominent, red, white, and blue, stars, flaggy, whatever. Make America great again. Trump 2016. Yeah, that's what I said, along with a few other things. I had, in fractions of a second, decided I didn't like this person. This was not my people. They were not part of my circle. I wanted nothing to do with them. Oh, look, another bumper sticker. I love my cat. <laughs> Long songs will be our scripture. Something that's been running around in my head for a long time. I didn't write it. It's a lyric from a, one of my favorite bands, The Whole State. And what it captures for me is this idea that community is everywhere. We are in them all the time. We are part of communities. We don't even think of them. And what I wanted to do as I spoke to you today is get you, us, to think about the communities we are a part of, whether we want to be or not. Because everywhere we go, we have that opportunity to recognize community. I'm not saying be in community. We don't have the opportunity to be in community. We are in community, whether we like it or not. We can recognize it. And the whole steady song captures this idea of people who have grown up loving a band and going to the shows together. And they grow up and they become separate people with separate lives as they go out into the world. And the line in the song is, you get to the point where the true scene leaders forget their differences. And the kids at the shows will have kids of their own. They hold studies about my age. And the sing-along songs will be our scripture. I've been to a lot of old study shows. I've been to a lot of concerts. But 
I go to a Hold Steady show, or I go to a John Hyatt show, and if somebody were, people really follow and really love, and the fans are wrapped. And so when Craig Finn of the Hold Steady gets up there and he sings Constructive Summer, summer and he sings the line, Double whiskey, coke, no ice. Everybody in that room is chanting it along with him. Even people who don't drink. <laughs> I assume there are hold steady fans who don't drink. Or people like me who would never ruin their whiskey with coke. <laughs> or ice. I mean, that is blasphemy to me. But I'm there with those people. And we are connected in that one way. And in a room of people, there may be Trump supporters. There may be people who hate cats. There may be people who hate dogs. There may be people who hate video games. There may be people who liked the first episode one of the Star Wars movies. <laughs> but in that moment, we're together and we've got a thing in common. And it's a starting place. And this connection, this sense of community can happen anywhere. Anytime. I run races. Amy and I have run, last year we ran a half dozen different races together, from 5Ks to half marathons. We're training for a marathon this year. I hate race morning. Because you get up at dawn, you gotta get to the thing, blah, 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 blah. But I love races. And I am an introvert. <laughs> I am. Doesn't mean I don't like to get up and talk in front of people. I don't necessarily want them to interact with me. <laughs> this is why I'm an actor, I'm a speaker, I'm a lawyer. The jury never gets to talk back. <laughs> and Amy is, yeah, and this is almost scale, but mostly an extrovert. But we take this very different approach on race day. I make friends. I have made dozens of friends that are in races. People I've never met. I chat a little bit at the starting line, I get past the crowd at the beginning, I'm a little irritable then. And then we're in the stretch and we're sitting <coughs> in. And for a mile, or a couple of miles, or a few minutes, we chat and we support each other. And we've got as far as I know, nothing in common, except that we all like to run really long distances for no apparent reason. <laughs> except the metal. I mean, we get the metal, but it, I don't go around wearing it. It would be a little weird. Well, not for long. I mean, after a marathon, I might wear it for a couple of days. Uh, <laughs> and then we go off, and I've made these bonds, these friends. And we go off, and I have no idea who any of them are. I don't know any of their names. I've never spoken to them, any of them again. And I probably never will. But for a little while, they were my community. And the marathon, the Twin Cities Marathon, is even great. Because it's not only the crazy runners. It's the people who get up early to line the streets and cheer us on. And as a runner, before I ran the marathon the first time, I thought, well, that's just silly. Oh my God, there are people out there I will never talk to supporting me, holding stupid signs <laughs> with the same joke every three or four miles, and I love every one of them. The last marathon I ran, mile 20 and a half is the worst hill on the course. I had to walk. I was, heart rate was stupid high. I wasn't gonna make my pace. I was hurting. And I got to the top of that hill, come to a curve and there's a woman there handing out orange slices. She had spent time for all of these runners to slice up oranges to hand to us. I just took one and said, bless you. Now, she didn't know I don't believe in God, so a blessing for me has little <laughs> value. But I said, bless you. And then I walked a little farther, hobbled a little farther, and then I'm looking at this ride and I'm like, I, 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 I don't know what to do with this. And some guy comes running out of the crowd. Says, sir. Hold on, dude. Sir? I'm not. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, I can take that for you. And he takes it. I don't know his name. I never recognize him. 
there we were in that moment. A community. Just a little community. And it can happen anywhere. It can happen as it did for Stephanie Lawrence with her camera and a guy boxcar him across the country with his dog in just a few minutes. And the reason I picked that reading today is that last line of it. And I never heard from him again. But it set her on her path of doing this amazing project, Humans of Minneapolis, where that creates its own community. As things get posted, people comment on them. And throughout the book, there are interviews that she's done with people afterward about how touched and inspired they were by the people who commented. And this sense that there's this vast community of people out there that could support them, even though they'll never meet, or mostly never meet. There was a really cute story about a two-year-old girl who got to meet somebody. Um, but for the most part, they're never going to meet each other. Or standing in line at a Target. We're all stuck because the person can't find their credit card or they bought too much stuff. And so there's this moment of, yeah, well, what are you going to do? Probably shouldn't have tried to buy groceries on a Saturday afternoon. I guess we're all a little dumb. Um, you know, any of those moments, any of those connections exist. There's a line in a Jason Isbell song. A man is the product of all of the people he ever loved. And it don't make a difference how it ended up. I love that line. Because I said that Amy and I approach races differently. And this is an observation she made. It's not something I came up with. That I can make these quick connections and take something from them and move on. <laughs> And Amy looks for more in investment in, those, in her relationships. For me, it doesn't matter if I get more time, necessarily. It doesn't matter how it ends up. It's that in those moments, I made a little more. Maybe it's just a little. If it's only a passing glance or a smart aleck remark in the line and target, that may be all I get out of that person. But in that moment, I become bigger. I become more connected. And there's a reason I think this is important. The theologian Paul Tillich wrote that there is really just one sin. Everything else flows from it. There are other bad acts, but there is one sin. Separation. Be right. Separation is sin. Separation from ourselves, separation from God, or what he referred to as the ground of our being, and separation from each other. And I want to read something. He wrote in 1948. The most irrevocable expression of the separation of life from life today, in 1948, is the attitude of social groups within nations toward each other, and the attitude of nations themselves towards other nations. The walls of distance in time and space have been removed by technical progress in 1948. But the walls of estrangement between heart and heart have been incredibly strengthened. Damn. <laughs> That's more than half a century ago. That was pre-Facebook. <laughs> so separation is the sin. But he quotes in this essay from 1948, he quotes, he quotes from Paul writing to the Romans, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Tillich is hopeful because tied to sin is grace. And to Tillich, grace is acceptance. 
It is the acceptance that we do not have to be estranged from one another. It is the acceptance of the idea that we can be accepted by and accepting of other people. So, Facebook. I love Facebook as an idea of community. And I hate Facebook because of how I see it being used to define community. Recently, a friend of ours, a new friend on Facebook, new Facebook friend, uh, but a person I've actually met, so not only 